Welcome to Nature Book Review, a video showcasing books on nature and wildlife. Approximately 570 million years ago, that is in Indian terminologies, 57 crores years ago, it was a Cambrian period when all majority of the life forms appeared on the planet. Before that, Earth was covered with blue-green algae and bacteria. Soon after, in the same Cambrian period or on the start of the Ordovician period, you get first glimpse of a vertebrate organism. Vertebrates are the animals with the backbone. Though they are less than 5% of the total animal diversity, they dominate the planet. All of us know that the life evolved under the sea so therefore it was the first vertebrate who dominated the planet was the sea so came the age of fish after that came the age of amphibians as some of the fish started coming to the land the land atmosphere was getting conducive for the survival so amphibians dominated the land soon after that came the age of reptiles all of us know the dinosaurs they dominated the planet for more than 16 160 million years soon after dinosaurs perished the mammals took over approximately 60 million years ago 65 million years ago and mammals dominate the planet till today so here is the book that tells us about the Prehistoric Life, The Rise of the Vertebrates by Dr. David Norman. Prehistoric Life, The Rise of the Vertebrates by Dr. David Norman. You can see here some of the vertebrates illustrated. The book is fairly large in size. Let's go through the book. So, uh, it says that with illustrations by John Sibick. Here you can see the earlier human beings. It is a box tree publication published in Great Britain in 1994. Let's go through the contents. Introduction, then origin of the universe, then beginnings of the life, the strange Cambrian world, the teeming seas, Gaining the land, conquering the land, variations on a theme, dinosaurs and birds, the tertiary world into the fourth age. So there are 10 chapters. After that, we come to the chronology of life, then further reading that is bibliography, then index and lastly the acknowledgement. There's the introduction. You can see passenger pigeons over here. So the first chapter deals with the origin of the universe. Then the beginning of life. You can see the text organized in two columns with the alignments on the both sides. The font is fairly dark, crisp and readable. There are photographs of the living world and the illustrations. You can see over here all the illustrations and photographs are supplemented by the footnotes this is how the fossils are recovered from the burgess shell in canada the fossil of the trilobite this is the living uh, animal called as the uh, velvet worm so this is the first mammalian ancestor called as the picaia so it resembles today's amphioxus so it shows a glimpse of uh, muscles so let's see what it says named after mount pika in the rockies the small worm-like creature of the burgess shell may be our earliest ancestor 
the fossils seem to possess a suite of potential chordate characteristics, including a notochord, a precursor of vertebral column and segmented muscles, that is the myotomes, to power the tail and can be presumed to have had a nerve cord and pharynx with the gill slits. Since it is a fossil, we cannot claim that it is having all the characters of chordates, but it shows primitive characters. The newt, then the teeming seas, an extraordinary, extraordinary variety of marine life. So when you uh, see, go through the book, you see a kind of uh, era or the time scale given over here. A nautilus, different uh, species of trilobites how they survived on the base of the floor of the ocean the first jawless fish that is called as the ignathas this is how jaw evolved from gill arches that is the gills of the fish primitive fish so these are the gills and how slowly it evolved into a jaw a very nice illustration earlier sharks, manta rays, the lungfish, the lobe fin fish, a living fossil which was discovered in 1938. Then slowly how land started, uh, the animals started coming onto the land. This is how a carboniferous earth look like beautiful swamp then the tetrapods the animals with the four legs the initial amphibians you can see there are insects already flying so uh, these are the skeletons of early amphibians which show possible link to the evolution of the reptiles conquering the land then dominance of the reptiles the mesozoic period the age of dinosaurs Dinosaurs and birds, an unexpected step in the evolution of life. So all of us know that the birds evolved from reptile, the Archaeopteryx. So different dinosaurs you can see here, the famous T-Rex, the Brachiopod, uh, Brachiosaurus, sorry, Stegosaurus. triceratops the link between reptiles and birds the archaeopteryx this is how it might have looked like then come the tertiary world toward our modern planet the rise of the mammals uh, the thylacine the animal just got extinct in the last century in Tasmania, Australia, kangaroos, then this is how there used to be a bird called as the diatrima who used to feed on ancestors of the horse, then the origin of whales and dolphins, ungulates. The massive Indricotherium. It was by far the largest member of the rhinoceros family, measuring up to 13 feet at shoulder and probably weighed around 15 tons. The ruminant stomach, the carnivores, elephants, and into the fourth age. That is the rise of the primates 
and humans. So, uh, that is uh, the book. The book takes us to the present day. So, here is the chronology of life for the reading chapter wise then index and at the end you will see acknowledgement to the pictures and the artwork that is drawing so this is a fantastic book on the prehistoric life and to understand how vertebrates evolved